My guest today is Patricia Douglas, and she's going to talk about a parent's love and her father's redemption. Monica Schmelter, I want to welcome you to Bridges today. My guest is an author and a pastor. I also count her as a friend. Her name is Patricia Douglas. And Patricia, it's good to have you here today. I'm glad to be here. It's been a long time. It's been such a long time. Yes, it's so yes. good to see you in person, have you back in the studio again. Yes, it's good to be here. It's really good to have you. So I love your book title, and I'm sure everybody asks you this. I was adopted twice. Yes. What does that mean? Well, it's so funny because a lot of people think at first that I was adopted once. That didn't work out. <laughs> and I had to be adopted again. But what it really means was I was adopted in the natural. Mm -hmm. And then when I came into the body of Christ, we we're adopted again. Yeah. So I was adopted twice, yeah. naturally and spiritually. Yeah. So yeah. you really were adopted twice. I really was. So it means exactly what it says. Yes. So the book is I Was Adopted Twice, and it's by Patricia Douglas. And so let's delve into that because, you know, Patricia, many times um, when people are adopted in the natural, it can might cause conflicting feelings with them or conflicting emotions. Tell me about your parents and how that happened. Oh, Wow. Well, my parents actually uh, wanted to have children, of mm -hmm. course, and they had decided that they were going to adopt. And uh, I share a little bit in there about how the first time my mom saw me, and I was in a foster home, and that was something else I had to realize, I wasn't orphaned. Oh. I had never thought about that yeah. before, you know, yeah. until five years ago. Wow. I just didn't think so it about just, it. You, you just obviously felt loved by your parents. And yes. so you didn't really think about the fact that there was this interim time didn't think where you it. really were an orphan. I didn't think about it. So how long was that time? I was an orphan of about seven months. Oh, that's a long time. And that's in that first year of life that they say yes, is so important. Very much. Wow. So what did your mom tell you what, when she saw you the first time? Okay. So I was in a foster home. So when they went in, there was a room with other children, of course, and she saw me in the crib mm -hmm. and I was peeking through the bars of the crib and she walked over and the Holy Spirit said, she's yours. Wow. Mom would tell me this. Mm -hmm. And she said to my dad, Leslie, this is the one. <laughs> and he said, Dahlia, are you sure? She said, well, the Holy Spirit just said she's ours. Oh. She's the one. Yeah. And so your dad, he knew then? He knew then. Wow. So it's like you really were handpicked. I literally was. People think I'm just making it up. Yeah. But I was handpicked. Mm -hmm. And there was actually another family that was supposed to adopt me at the last minute. And that fell through. Mm -hmm. So there I was. Wow. Yeah. So it's like really even in your story, the intervention of God. Yes. Right? Because there was another family that clearly they wanted you. Yes. Right? And for whatever reason, that didn't work out. Mm -hmm. And I think so many times, Patricia, we can look at those things in our lives and wonder. I know I have. You know, the denials, the delays, the different things that you think, well, this didn't work out. That didn't work out. What's wrong with me? Mm -hmm. I mean, and yet... You felt you feel chosen. Mm -hmm. I know I was. Mm -hmm. I know I was. That's so good. Do you know anything about your birth parents, or did you ever feel like that they rejected you? Is that ever part I of the story? I never felt that at all, mm -hmm. and that's a, a different story altogether. But I never felt that mm -hmm. rejection. But I know a lot of times with adoption, people say mm -hmm. there can be some feelings of abandonment. Mm -hmm. but I never felt that with my parents. That's, I really didn't. That's awesome because. They light, laid eyes on you, so it was like love at first sight. Yes. And then the Holy Spirit spoke to your mom, and she just, like God confirming she's the one. Yes, exactly. So when you wrote the book, I Was Adopted Twice, what are you wanting to share with your readers? What are you wanting to talk to them about? I wanted to share a little bit about my story. Of course, that's not all of my story. Sure. But the most important thing is about our redemption mm -hmm. in the body of Christ. And we have been adopted. We're no longer slaves. Amen. We're no longer just out there in a foster home. We're no longer orphans. Right. So when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord, mm -hmm. then we've been adopted into the kingdom and we can say, Abba, Father. That's what the word says. Yes. So each chapter has a spiritual reflection That's, to it. You know, yeah. I think that that is so wonderful and so affirming for all of us. I know that one of the first scriptures that really 
popped out to me after I gave my heart to Christ that the Holy Spirit just kind of brought to me was, you know, basically you didn't choose me, but I chose you. Yes. And I think that, you know, even uh, for those watching and for people that might be struggling with rejection or even not, right? People, sometimes we don't know who we are in Christ and we're looking for somebody to pick us. We're looking for somebody to love us. We're looking for some of that. And if we could understand and what you're saying and what the Bible clearly teaches us is that he's already selected us. Yes. He, it, it, the word clearly says he chose us. We did not choose him yeah. until after he introduced himself to right. us. All right. <laughs> right. Yes. right. But he chose us from the beginning. And I, I look at that verse and he says, and I chose you to bear fruit yes. and fruit that will remain. So if I am feeling discouraged or things aren't working out, you know, all the things that we go through in a broken world, I remind myself, wait a minute. He selected me. Mm -hmm. He chose me first. Mm -hmm. And he chose me for good. And that's for everybody watching, not just us. I mean, this is for all of us. Exactly. He chose us. Mm -hmm. we didn't, finding him is not really our idea. He chose us first. And then he ordained us. He sanctioned us for good. So when, you know, when our plans go awry or they get derailed or we mess up or whatever, I remind myself he chose me for good. So tell me about for the reader when they find these affirmations. What, what are the kinds of things that you work to teach them and what will they learn and how will they benefit? Well, one of the things which I think is very important is that God will forgive us. He's faithful and just to forgive us, yes. right? And cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But sometimes we tend to think that he is holding something over our head. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I used yeah. to think mm -hmm. years ago mm -hmm. that God was in heaven and waiting for me to make a mistake mm -hmm. so he could um, push this button that say, okay, Patricia, you're out of the picture. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? I do. So at one point I'm sharing with them, yes, I made some mistakes. I made some mistakes that people don't know about when mm -hmm. they read that book, mm -hmm. okay? But God told me to stay close to him yes. because I would move away every time. I said, Dad, I don't think you want to be bothered with me. Yeah. I don't think so. But he yeah. would say, I need you to stay mm -hmm. at my feet, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. And I said, but I did this or that. He said, but when you leave, there's a gap between us. Yeah. And in that gap, the enemy can come in. That's right. So we have to stay close to him regardless. Now, we don't want to keep making the same mistake, sure. but we want to learn and get wisdom right. from that. Right. Exactly. And I think part of what you said, and as you talk about uh, in your book, I Was Adopted Twice, about the Father's redemption. So many times we carry in our own ideas Mm -hmm. about what redemption is, right? right? And in our head, you know, because I, I completely relate to what you just said, especially when I first became a Christian, I thought every time I messed up that I disappointed God mm -hmm. and that I just needed to go away because I just couldn't do that. Right. I just, I just couldn't live that life and that I must just be such a disappointment to him. And it took a lot of prayers, a lot of reading of the word, and, you know, I was a teen when I gave my heart to Christ. So a few conversations with the pastor to help me understand that God is not up in heaven looking to hit me over the head because I've done wrong. Exactly. He wants to hold me close. He wants to hold you close. He wants to hold people that he wants us to be close. So the enemy doesn't run mm -hmm. roughshod with our life, but our human inclination is if we mess up to walk away. Exactly. And see, you're sharing like when you first got born again, but also I'm addressing those that are seasoned yes. Christians or believers that may miss the mark mm -hmm. and they just stop everything. Yeah. And you can't do that. No, no, absolutely not. Mm. And God does not want that. And I've met people who will tell me, you know, I have served God for 25 years and then they got you know, sexual sin, an affair, gave way to something that they knew was wrong, but they did. And this is the thing, you know, the enemy is not all powerful, but he is cunning. Mm -hmm. And so it, when we sin, if we'll let him, he'll take us completely away. Exactly. And then all the years that we've invested the growth, God still wants us to come back. Exactly. He's not casting us aside or anything. Um, now, grace is not a permission or a license yeah. to sin. You know, that can go the other way. Uh -huh. You know, you've uh -huh. heard that. Yeah. But it's like, I have an advocate with the Father. That's right. And when we repent, what we're saying is, I need to change my mind on how I handle this or that. Exactly. 
Exactly. And we need to be willing yes. to get his help. Yes. To change our mind, right? Yes. We, because some people, I, I, I think you're right, they will look at grace as, well, I can just do anything and he'll just forgive me. Mm -hmm. And if that's the thought process, that's not even true repentance. Like, that is not what our Father is looking for. But when we really are repentant, his grace gives us the desire and the ability to do his will, to obey. Exactly. Yeah. And the Holy Spirit, He's important to us. I don't know why we think he's not, yeah. but when I look at my life, I can see how the Holy Spirit, he was with me mm -hmm. from, from the seven months, from the time I was even conceived till I yes. was born, he was with me. Mm -hmm. And then when I became to know he was with me and I still acted up, mm -hmm. you know, I grieved him, but he still was with me. Right. And he knew I, that God had something better for me. Right. And I think sometimes if we look at, and not all parents, but most parents who love their children, may get upset, right? May get grieved with a child's bad behavior or even an adult child, right? Right. We may get upset with their behavior. We may not agree, but is there ever a moment that we don't love? We shouldn't. Right. It shouldn't be. <laughs> right, 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 right. I know for me, I can say, you know, there might be some moments of disappointment or like, man, I told you better than that. Like I modeled that better. But there's never a moment that I don't love our son. Exactly. Never. There's never a moment that I don't want what's best for him. And if we understand the heart of our father so much more, mm -hmm. So much more. So we're going to have to take a break here in just a moment. But could you give me one example from the book real quick? Uh, the one example is um, my aunt, the one that used to make my dresses when I was a little girl. Mm -hmm. And we would always get on the bus and go downtown. And people would say, oh, my gosh, where did you get her? Uh. <laughs> you know, believe it or not, I used to talk a lot. <laughs> oh, I can't believe that. Yeah, I did. Uh -huh. And then when I went, it was at fear stage, I shut it all down, mm -hmm. but God brought my joy back and brought everything back. Amen. That is so wonderful. I want you to stay with us when we come back. We're going to continue to hear more about Patricia Douglas's story. Join the Bridges community on Facebook. Visit Facebook and search for Bridges with Monica. We would love to connect with you. Don't miss another episode of Bridges. Subscribe to our YouTube channel today where you can find all of Monica's latest teachings and interviews. It's easy to do. Just visit youtube.com, search Monica Schmelter and click subscribe. Once you are subscribed, click the bell icon to get notified when a new episode is available to view. Thanks for watching Bridges. Prayer changes things. If you need prayer, call 615-754-0039 or email prayer at ctntv.org. If you are just joining us today on Bridges, my guest is Patricia Douglas, and her book is I Was Adopted Twice. It's a story of a parent's love and her heavenly father's redemption. And Patricia, I've been so enjoying just talking with you about your story, having been adopted in the natural and in the spiritual. So you can come at it from two different perspectives. And I know that, you know, obviously God wanted you to write the book to help people and to impart, you know, spiritual truths. And I think we do learn from other people's stories. What are some of the things that you put in the book that might be helpful? One of the things is reminding us of our benefits mm -hmm. in the kingdom of God, in the body of Christ, because I have the legal documents of my natural adoption. And it's very clear in there that whatever Leslie and Dahlia had belongs to me. Mm -hmm. I'm an heir of that. I have an inheritance. Well, the same with the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, we're seated in heavenly places with him, mm -hmm. right? So we are heirs of him. So we have the same benefits of health and peace, preservation, all restoration, all of those things. And so it's taking the natural again and the spiritual and showing you. But if you don't open the words, then you That's don't right. know what your benefits are. That's right. That's right. And, you know, I think that a lot of people wrongfully assume, right? You pray the prayer, you ask forgiveness for the sins, and then that's just it. And like, that's not it. Um, salvation is immediate if a person is sincere, but to walk in the benefits that you're talking about, we have to learn about them. Right. And where else are you going to learn? 
other than his word. Yes. And I think something I, I hear you saying is we go to autopilot. Yeah. We get born again and we just think, mm -hmm. I don't have to do anything. Right. God's going to do this, 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 and this. But the Bible says we are co-laborers with him. Yes. So even in prayer, we have to partner with what his word says right. about us. Yes. You know? Yes, he's not looking for robots, right? Exactly, exactly. He, he wanted relationship with human beings. And so relationship is the key, right? Exists. He does his part, but we have to do our part. And we have no idea, if we're honest, what our part is unless we read the word. Exactly. That's our. It's just like if you bought a new stove. <laughs> okay, then you could assume <laughs> that you know how to work it and say, oh, I know how to do this. Mm -hmm. And so you'll go ahead and start working and realize, where is that manual? Exactly. I need that manual. <laughs> exactly. You know, it wasn't too long ago that my mom called me and she said, that, she said we had to call a oven repair guy. I'm like, why? She says, well, it's reading like 600 degrees, you know, and I don't cook it to 600 degrees. I said, well, does it feel really hot? Like 600? She said, no. Well, anyway, somehow, some way, they had accidentally gotten it off on Celsius. Okay. Oh, okay. So the manual, if they had gotten out the manual, right, <laughs> if they would have known. And so the repair guy's like, okay, so when things like this happen, look at the manual. And it's like that, yes. right, in the spiritual exactly. with the word. If we don't read the manual, I think of that verse, Patricia, that says that the Father will bring all things to our remembrance mm -hmm. when we need them. Well, if we didn't ever take time to remember it, like there's nothing to bring. Exactly. If you don't read it, what are you going to remember? Exactly. Exactly. How's the Holy Spirit going to bring you something? Right. That's why when people talk about prophesying and different things, but then they're not in the Word, then I want to, where are you getting your information from? Exactly. Where are you getting your right. information Cause you, cause from? Because people just say and do anything. Yes. Like you, Sometimes you just have to know, like when someone says, this is a prophecy and this is for you, there have been times I've just had to say, thank you. Exactly. Just thank you. But like, I know that's not from God, mm -hmm. Right. Because it doesn't line up with the word of God. Exactly. And so they might be well-intended. They might not. I don't mess around with any of that because that's not on me. But I'm not going to accept something that doesn't line up with the word. I had a young lady ask me once. She said, well, I, I, she was wanting to be involved with this married guy. And I said, scripturally, you can't do that. She said, well, can I pray that God would make that happen? I said, no, you can't pray against the word of God. I mean, you can say the words, but God is not honoring that That's prayer, right. right? If that happens, that is not God doing that. You So the word of God and that second adoption, mm -hmm. <laughs> right? That's the one that gives us all the spiritual benefits. Exactly. The part that's on us is to do our part. And we have a part. Yeah. we got to stop being so lazy. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? I do. I and do. And that's not what, we got this idea sometimes, I'll just sit and I'll just, the Bible said wait on the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. That's not yeah. what he's saying. It's not at all. Mm. And you know, I've had to look honestly, you know, at my own life and say, okay, so I've been born again for all these years and what? Do I take my faith seriously, right? What am I doing with it? There are times I have to look at my life and say, you know, really, I can't take an evening after work and just devote it to the Word? Does every night need to be TV or an activity, mm, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Those are things that sometimes it's a sacrifice, right? Because especially if a person's very busy and they've got a full-time job or a couple of jobs or raising little babies at home, our part is to take his word seriously. And those are times, I mean, I'm not proud, but there are times that I just realize I'm way off kilter here. Exactly. But you know, I believe that God, again, will grace us. Amen. For an example, if you have mm -hmm. a mother that's homeschooling small ones, yes. he'll make that time of even 15 minutes yes. and spend with him. That's He's not right. going to say, okay, I expect you to spend two hours with me. The kids running around, they making their own breakfast, no. changing their own diapers and all no. that stuff. No. So it's each, no. he knows according to our lives. He does. I'm so glad you said that because he's not a calculator. No. You know, I've heard people say, well, you know, you have to tithe your time and you have to tithe your prayer. You and I both know, because we're both moms, when you've got a little one, you might not be able to pray for 2.4 hours every single day in a row. You no. can pray without ceasing, That's right? That's right, But yes. he sees the, the, the diaper duty. He sees the sleepless nights. He sees the person that's working a couple of jobs right now. But he's looking for our heart, for us to make him 
can, the first priority that we can. It's not right. counting the hours off. It's not checking the boxes. It's, it's my heart. Mm -hmm. Do I love him? Mm -hmm. Am I seeking him in, in, within the life that I have? So I'm so glad you said that. You know, when you said checking off, that was another thing. Sometimes the way we see our natural father mm -hmm. can interfere with our spiritually father, yes. spiritual father. Yes. You know, and, you know, as I'm sharing in the book, you know, I've had some times that I wasn't always sweet and my wings weren't always straight. Okay, <laughs> And my parents disciplined me, mm -hmm. but I still, oh, I had the best parents. I really did. Oh. But in that, I found myself sometimes if something didn't go the way I thought in my training or rearing, mm -hmm. I began to look at God that way like my dad. Yeah. And then I had to change that. And my dad was not abusive or anything like that, mm -hmm. but that disciplinary side, yes. you know, and people don't like this. Y'all don't like this, but God, is, he will chastise us. Absolutely. Okay, so y'all need to go yeah. on and get ready. Yeah, because I've heard people say that he doesn't. He says that he disciplines those whom he loves. Well, see, that means they haven't read it in the Word. Exactly. They don't know their benefits. It's right. Because, <laughs> and it says that discipline, right? produces a harvest of righteousness. Yes. So sometimes even in those seasons that, and you know, I don't think he expects us to jump up and down all happy about being disciplined, yeah. but to value the benefit. <laughs> but he loves yes. us. Yes, he That's does. That's why he's doing it. That's right. And it's to better us. Mm -hmm. Just like you did your children, like I did mine. Yes. They didn't like it, no. but they, they had to understand this, I love you. <laughs> My dad used to say, I'm more disciplined because I love you. I said, can you try not to love me so much? <laughs> That's what I used to say, too. Stop loving me so much. Stop it. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I was, you know, especially in my early teen years, I was always messing up and getting disciplined. And I would say that, too. Once I even said to my mom, I said, well, just hate me a while for a while. Yeah. Just hate me, okay? Yeah. But I realize now that that takes so much more love. Because yeah, it, it would have been so much easier to just say, go on, get out of here, do what you want. I don't care. Right. And then where would you be today? Yeah. Would you be sitting here today? Would I be sitting here? I don't think we would. I mean, I don't think I would for sure. I know I would. Yeah, because I know that I was, I had it in my mind that I was not going to do the right thing. I had it in my head that I knew better than everybody. So without my parents' discipline and without God finding me, no, I would not be mm -hmm. sitting here, but we are sitting here mm -hmm. and that we can help people, including ourselves, see mm -hmm. he loves us and he never does anything without our best interest at heart. Exactly. Exactly. That's our father. Yeah. That's our father. Yeah. And to know him and to know his love. The book, again, is I Was Adopted Twice, and it's written by my guest today. She is a pastor, an author, wife, mom. Her name is Patricia Douglas. I was adopted twice. So we've got some time left here, Patricia. What are some other concepts that you go over in your book to help us understand, you know, the Father's redemption, those benefits? Well, you know, one thing I also want to remind uh, everyone, we all have treasures in us. Mm -hmm. The Bible says we have treasures in this earthen vessel. And one thing about the book and one of the things that God has called me to do is to dig up those treasures that are in people. Mm -hmm. But going back to what you said a while ago, but each person, the Lord told me, I want you to use my tools, Patricia, mm -hmm. but you cannot use the same tools on everybody. Yeah. Some people you have to use a smaller tool of the word to dig up because they've been so hurt, so broken. That's right. Then you have those that are rebellious. <laughs> So you got to pull out the heavy artillery <laughs> of the word, you know, and stuff like that. Uh, the way you the sin of death. You see what I'm exactly. saying? Exactly. I do. And so yes. being sensitive to the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. and being able to help to bring those treasures up mm -hmm. that he has placed yeah. on the inside of us. And that's so important and valuable what you just said, following the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. because when we share Christ with people, it's not, God doesn't, it's not cookie cutter. No. Right. The Holy Spirit leads in different ways, because like you said, some people have been very hurt, yeah. so they're fragile. And so it's not that we water down the truth. It's just that we present it more gently. Exactly. Other people, if you don't get up in their face, they can't hear it. Exactly. <laughs> and, you know, one thing people have said to me is, you know, I think you just 
ate me up, but you did it with, with um, being yeah. humorous. I said, mm -hmm. that's the personality he's given me. Yeah, yeah, you know? and, the, and humor is a beautiful gift from God yes. when used properly that we can say something really hard, but in a way that can, a person can still laugh and see yes. that God loves them. We're out of time, but okay. I want to thank you so much for being you, here Monica. today. It's been good to talk with you. You too, thank you. Stay tuned. Monica will be right back with closing comments. For more information on today's guest, visit the website on your screen. Log on to www.ctntv.org where you can make a prayer request, view our program guide, see who's on bridges, or even watch one of Monica's latest teachings. Log on to www.ctntv.org. Don't give in. God's Word says you're an overcomer. It takes training. It takes discipline. And so when you're fighting that good fight of the faith, you take your story, whatever it is, and you saturate it in faith, and you fight for it. Visit monicaschmelter.com to schedule Monica to speak at your next event. When it comes to God's love for us, there's literally nothing else like it. Jesus says, and the Bible says it like this, that we didn't choose him, but that he chose us. And that makes all the difference in our relationship with God. So many times we approach him struggling, trying to be worthy, trying to, deserve, trying to deserve his love. And the thing is, before the foundation of the earth, he knew us, he saw us, and he chose us. He knew exactly what he was getting. He has no buyer's remorse, or, oops, sorry that I redeemed them. That doesn't happen with his love. And then not only does he say that he chose us, he says uh, we didn't choose him first, he chose us and that he ordained us to do good work. So many times there are even people in our lives and people who say, well, you won't ever amount to anything. You won't ever be able to accomplish anything. And in those dark moments of doubt, insecurity, and struggle, it's important for you and important for me to remind ourselves what God's word says, that he chose us to bear fruit and fruit that will remain long ago. Now, fruit and fruit that will remain. Fruit is good. Things that won't be stolen away with time or with decay or because we mess up. You were ordained and appointed for good. I was ordained and appointed for good. Now, it's our choice to lean into that. But if you've been believing lies that you're not good enough and you have to make yourself worthy, understand that's a lie. God's word itself says that he chose you and ordained you and ordained you to bear fruit. So think on that. We're out of time. We've got to go, but we say goodbye and God bless you.